today's video, we're going to see if we can scale up our previously done paint stick boomerang build. Guys, Grant was working on this book, 52 Random Weekend Projects, for over a year, and it is now ready. It's available for pre-sale, and today we are going to be doing one of the projects in this book, as well as scaling it up to see if we can make it even a little bit more interesting. Now this is one, the paint stick boomerang, and I believe you actually had a video on this one about how you can make a boomerang out of paint sticks. It's pretty simple, and these things fly really far, so. Functional boomerang, <laughs> throw it, comes back, you can catch it if you're brave, <laughs> and it works really well. It's a fun project. So today, not only are we going to be doing that, but we have a few different ways that we want to scale this up into ways we don't know if they're going to work yet. It's sort of an experiment. Here's the basic idea. In the book, 52 Random Weekend Projects, we show you how to build a boomerang out of paint sticks. We're going to see if we can take that idea and scale it up in a few fun ways. We're going to try to make a functional metal boomerang, which I do not think I will be brave enough to try and catch. It'll be more like running away. Um, We're making a giant throwing star, guys. I'm so we've excited. We've got some larger paint <laughs> sticks for, I guess, if you have a five gallon bucket of paint that you're mixing up. We want to see if we sure. can make a bigger boomerang out of that. And then we're also going to take some of this foam core that we got from Flight Test. Thanks, guys. Yep. And we're going to see if we can make an even larger boomerang. Now, they have actually made a giant boomerang of this same style mm -hmm. on their channel, but and it was made it work. theirs was like yes. six feet tall. We're not going to go for six feet tall. We're going to go for like the size of one of these sheets, maybe, and see if we can get that to work. So, yeah, let's get started. First, we're just going to get some of these glued up. That's okay. the first step. You find the center of the paint sticks, and then you make sure that they're at a square, and you glue them together with wood glue after that you sand them, but we're not at that point yet. So let's start out by just finding the center of the paint sticks. But we wanna see if it's going to make them fly differently with the longer paint sticks. Yes. So we're going to do one set, keeping the handle on, see if it can still be thrown, and then one set we're actually going to take off this part. So on the larger ones, the handle is slightly more shaped than it is on our smaller paint sticks. So we're not sure if this is going to make the flight any different. So we're gonna make one set where we keep the handles on, second set where we just cut that part off, see if that makes it any easier. With the metal one, I'm trying to keep some of the proportions pretty much the same. These paint sticks are about one inch wide and they're 12 inches long. Our bar of aluminum here is one and a half inches wide. So we're going to scale up the length to be proportional. So instead of 12 inches, we're gonna go for 18. All right, now this one's gonna be riveted together rather than wood glue because wood glue does not work very well on aluminum. So we're just gonna have four rivets in here. I'm not gonna drill through both at once because I want to make sure that the holes are lined up properly. So I'm gonna drill into one and then make sure it's lined up really nicely and then mark where to drill into the other. If I had the right kind of clamps to hold this while I drilled through both and made sure it was square, that'd probably be better, but I think this will work just fine. We're gonna be using rivets. You've never seen rivets in action before. Here's the basic idea. This peg here looks like kind of a funny nail, but we have this collar up here, I think is made of aluminum most of the time. So this fits in here and inside there's something that's going to grab onto this nail part and just start pulling it. But it can't pull past this sort of collar thing. It just squishes it out, all sort of weird, wide, funny shape. And eventually it breaks right off. Now in this case, the nail part came here and the aluminum part shot off, but normally what we'll do is we'll have this piece of aluminum running through what we're trying to hold together. So this will just sort of stay on there and it'll just be wedging from both sides, holding it in place. My favorite part about that entire explanation is that Nate can't get away from the fact that he said, here's the basic idea to explain how this would work. So Nate right now is working on getting our metal boomerang going. So what we're gonna do with our paint sticks here is we're going to shave down one side of each of these to about half the thickness of the paint stick itself. And then the other side we're going to round out along with the edges here. That should give us a shape that's gonna to wanna to come back.
tested it. This foam will dissolve if we try to spray paint this. We don't have anything to seal it right now. So we're gonna leave that one white. We're gonna leave our metal one metal. Everything else is gonna get color. We have We've our boom rings. rings. We do. We've been practicing. We've been practicing <laughs> with the standard ones. We haven't yes. tried any of the experimental ones so far. Turns out guys, I really suck at throwing boomerangs. This one I've managed to make come back to me. <laughs> but like so much more power and spin, so much more. <laughs> what if I were to tell you that's all of my power? Impossible. Helped a little Wait, more. Hang on. Almost. Okay. Still more spin. It okay. needs to be like a blade come out of your hand. Oh, neat. Yeah, when Nate throws it, you can hear it spin. When I throw it, you can hear my failure on the wind. It's still over there. <laughs> You're welcome, Mark. Whoa! I don't know where it goes. I just hear it go zipping past my head when he throws it. This one, it's interesting because there's more weight behind it. But again, I don't think I've got the, the flick of my wrist right when I'm throwing these. Nate, you're gonna have to try this one. I don't know if you're gonna have to dodge. All right, go for it. Whoa! We have the sides that we sanded down and we have the sides that we didn't sand down. Well, we rounded a little bit, but it, in wing shape it goes down <laughs> that way. And that's what's called the leading edge. And so, best way I found to throw these, leading edge goes first, so the tapered part is behind as you're throwing it. So you don't want to throw it cutting into the wind with the wedge. You want the big rounded edge. And honestly, what I found works best is just throwing it straight up and down, out in front of you. That one just sounds cool. I mean, it. I threw it that way and it came over here, so. You don't have to be afraid if I'm throwing it, it's okay. <laughs> yep, it went up. That's really cool though. And it broke. Okay, I was gonna say, that sounded like it did some damage to this something. Is, yeah, last time we did boomerangs and we were on nice soft grass, this dirt is much harder. <laughs> yeah, not a great return on the big ones. All right, we've got our <laughs> large flight test foam boomerang. I do want to just preface this with, we didn't build this as well as they build theirs, guys. You should see their six foot one, it's awesome. There's also the fact that it's pretty lightweight and even a slight breeze could really affect this, but I'm gonna try it, here goes. Go for it. Wow, what? <laughs> <laughs> ah, first throw! <laughs> That worked so much better than we could have hoped for. Yeah! That was awesome. There we go. That one threw too far up. Still caught it, it comes down <laughs> slow. So I had been kind of joking at first, but if you wanted to make a giant cosplay Fuma Shuriken from Naruto and lots of other anime, this would actually work very, very well because you could actually get this in flight. Death Star, Death Star, Death Star. I mean, a different kind of Death Star, All but... Right. I'm gonna throw it that way. <laughs> so if it curves, there's like nothing for it to hit. I'm very excited. The problem is if it does work, honestly. <laughs> That's the worst case scenario here, is that it works perfectly <laughs> and comes back at us like a blender. We're just gonna stay right. out of its path. <laughs> no curve. That just... <laughs> that was just a blade of death. It did a little wobble thing. It definitely didn't curve, but it like wobbled a little bit and then just went surprisingly straight and deadly. So what we have here is a few returning boomerangs for fun and then one hunting boomerang on accident. Metal boomerang might be worth revisiting sometime using better metal grinding tools to get a better wing shape out of it. So guys, making boomerangs out of paint sticks like it tells how to do in the book. Super fun, 
doesn't take that much time. A little bit of trial and error to get it to work. Scaling it up, we had okay results with the larger paint sticks. We had terrible results with the metal boomerang, although maybe worth revisiting later. That's not terrible, that was awesome. In terms of returning terrible results. And then our giant foam one using the flight test foam worked quite well. I was surprised, like the first time I threw it, I caught it. It's the exact same design. We just used the foam core board instead of paint sticks, scaled it up. This particular one, at least, was doing this really nice, like, slow helicoptering thing to just give you plenty of time to catch it. And it's, it's foam core. It doesn't really hurt, even if it's hitting you a little harder. So go ahead. The book is available for pre-order. Get yours now. Check the link in the description. Good stuff. I don't think I'm doing this right. <laughs> it's just a metal stick at this point. Mm -hmm. Guys, that's it for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.